So I am so excited to be with you this afternoon. I left my grandson's first birthday party to be here. So you know this is important. Uh, he, he knows what I think about playing football in the brain. He knows how to take care of his brain so far. You know, brains run the world. They run the stock market, the local market, huge corporations, governments not that well. <laughs> Wouldn't you like to scan these three brains? If you could fix them, maybe we could actually get something done. Brains run schools, churches, families, and your brain runs you. But we rarely think about the brain, which is a huge mistake, because success in whatever you do always starts with a healthy brain. So what we're going to do today, this is the big idea with a little forethought and a brain smart plan, your life and the lives of those you love can be amazing. But you have to think about it. You know, we never think about the brain. Why don't we think about the brain? We can't see it, right? So I spend my days, I have four clinics. We have two new ones coming online this year in Atlanta and New York. But we do brain imaging. So if you have problems with depression and you're not getting better on the medicine your family practice doctor gave you in a three-minute office visit, <laughs> am I wrong about that? No. Absolutely not, right? Then people come to us and go, well, what's going on with, with my brain? We've been looking at the brain every day for the last 21 years. We've done over 73,000 brain scans on people from 90 different countries. So when, I, when I'm talking to you about this today, I'm not talking to you about like 50 cases I did or something I read about in a book. We live and breathe optimizing brain health. But it's very clear nobody thinks about it, right? You think about your skin, right, because you see it in the mirror. Or you think about the fat around your belly because your genes don't fit right. Right? Or you make an appointment with the hairdresser because you can see the roots in your hair and you don't like that. But because nobody looks at their brain, they don't think about it. But by the end of today, you're going to think about it. Did you know that Alzheimer's disease starts in your brain 30 to 50 years before you have any symptoms? You literally have no time to wait to start getting yourself healthy. I mean, some of you were like me. You know, I'll like get healthy when I'm 40. And then 40 comes and I'm like, well, 45, 50. And then I read that the National Institute on Aging changed their staging guidelines for Alzheimer's disease. So it used to be you, they, they had three stages. So the first is you're normal, no symptoms. The second is you have this thing called mild cognitive impairment. So you're dropping names and dropping words and forgetting appointments. And then the last one is you have Alzheimer's disease. But based on all this imaging research, last year they changed their guidelines. Now we have four stages. The first one is you're normal. The second one is you're normal, but your brain is deteriorating. Mild cognitive impairment, Alzheimer's disease. Do you see the problem with the second one? Is you have no symptoms. You have no idea that there's a problem. And yet, if we looked at your brain, it's deteriorating. Now that should just scare the socks off all of you that you literally have no time to wait. So I'm going to give you seven very simple steps to have a better brain and a better life. And the first one is that it's very important to understand that brain excellence 
is your competitive advantage in anything you do, whether it's in relationships, at work, with your money, raising your children, whatever. I love this slide. So it's me with Muhammad Ali. And do you think boxing is a good brain sport or a bad brain sport? It's a really bad brain sport. Your brain is soft about the consistency of soft butter. It's not firm, fixed, and rubbery. That's what happens when you take a brain out of a skull, fix it in formaldehyde, then play with it in the anatomy lab, right? In a living skull, so what's going on between your ears now is it's really soft, like soft butter, tofu, custard. Somewhere between egg whites and jello, think toothpaste. <laughs> and it's housed in a really hard skull that has multiple sharp, bony ridges. So if you think that your brain's involved in everything you do, how you think, how you feel, how you act, how you get along with other people, your brain is the organ of personality, character, intelligence, and every single decision that you make why in God's name would you ever let a child hit a soccer ball with their head? What is the matter with you? Why would we allow our children to play tackle football? We are learning more and more about the devastating effects of repetitive long-term brain damage. But yet we cheer for it. We pay serious money on cable TV to watch Ultimate Fighting, it is almost like we're a brain-damaged society. <laughs> Your brain is the most special organ in the universe. There is nothing as complicated as the human brain, nothing. It's estimated we have 100 billion nerve cells, and each nerve cell is connected to other cells, not by a one-to-one -one connection, but there are thousands of individual connections between individual cells. You have more connections in your brain than there are stars in the universe. And even though your brain is only 2% of your body's weight, about three pounds, it uses 20 to 30% of the calories that you consume. That's why I love being here. You're learning about superfoods. It's so important to the health of your brain. How you think is directly related to how you eat. And a fast food society will never be a great society because your neurons aren't correct connecting. Right. On average, information in your brain travels at about 268 miles per hour unless, of course, you're drunk or you're smoking pot. One of our football players, I'll tell you about our NFL study in a little bit, but he came back for his follow-up scan and it actually looked quite terrible, which really irritated me because everybody else was looking good. And I'm like, Reggie, what's the deal? And he said, well, I thought you said going green meant smoking pot. I'm like, Reggie, this is not the sign of intelligent life. <laughs> what I've learned from my imaging work is that on average, you lose about 85,000 neurons a day. And your behavior either accelerates that process or it decelerates that process. Being at a conference where we talk about longevity, the first place to start is by optimizing the physical health of the organ between your ears. Because if you don't do that, you won't make good decisions, and everything else tends to go to hell. So this is the first principle. Your brain's involved in everything you do. Pretty simple, right? The next one's just equally as simple.